everyone this is Vivek and in this particular video we will talk about speed and accuracy in the realms of DSA and competitive programming. We will not just talk about verses because of course both of them are important but we will also talk about when do each one of them get more important and how can you improve both of them in a structured way. Okay. So let's talk about why, why are we even talking about this. Now all of you would know about speed being important right. I think at an early stage speed builds a lot of rating and consequently a lot of motivation because when you can solve A and B problems say in code forces at a good speed you can easily reach 1000 plus like 1200 kind of a rating and thereafter then you have to learn something new and A and B are generally implementation some greedy strategies that you have to implement right. So speed definitely comes with a lot of rating boost at the start. Also speed is super important when you go to coding test and interviews also. Why? In coding test you on an average get 30 minutes per problem and in that stress scenario it's super difficult to code it in 30 minutes right. Similarly in interviews also you have to navigate the total time with the expectation that the interviewer has on an average let's say 30 minutes again per problem. So speed becomes very crucial to manage time in both of them so that you can perform really well. What about accuracy? Again accuracy is also super important. Why? Because we all know right one wrong answer can cost you a lot of rating in an actual contest on a code forces or at code or any place and in fact it's more important in coding tests and interviews because that's a stress scenario when you make a bug if you don't have an accuracy to your code let's say the interviewer says you have a mistake in your code and you'd be like okay that first of all you need to find it but then you are also stressed that I've already messed it up right. So that kind of flow kind starts coming into and it's become super difficult to debug in such stress scenarios. So being correct on the first instance itself is super important. Now when to focus on which one of them? I think that's a very important question because I feel many people practice in a wrong order, right? Let's talk about two different parts. One is first hundred problems then talk about let's talk about the next hundred problems and then rest of the journey for yourself. So we are talking about when you are solving the first 100 DSA competitive programming problems that you are doing, next 100 and then after that. So firstly, first 100 problems. In the first 100 problem you will realize that your implementation and logic both are dubious or both are bad, right? You can't really code, you can't really understand what to use in this problem and everything is messed up all the place, right? Yes, right? So what can you do? You can actually focus on accuracy. Why exactly accuracy? Why not speed? I don't know if you have ever heard about learning any hard skill or have you ever heard some learned something like a musical instrument but let's suppose you try to pick up guitar or you start, start going to some classes right you will you will be always instructed that focus on being correct first be slow and then make it faster as you progress right why is that so let me tell you even programming or competitive programming is a lot of muscle memory right any hard skill after a certain point in time becomes a muscle memory. I don't think about STL or syntaxes of C++ now when I solve a problem. It's all in my muscle memory. I my just hands just type them up. I don't even think about okay, so what will I use and all. I know okay, this is going to be done automatically by my hand. I, know, I just think about high level constructs and then I know my hands can code the rest. Of course I think in brain only but I'm just saying that it's like a muscle memory and you have that built already for you. Now when you build wrong muscle memories what happens is you have to unlearn and relearn those things and that takes quite a lot of time. Okay, Believe me I have unlearned and relearned enough number of things to realize that that's a bigger trap that you can get into that you learn something wrong right in the wrong way in a wrong mental framework and then you correct it up later. It takes time you can of course it will improve you over time but it wastes a lot of time too in the growth. So in the first hundred always focus on accuracy because you want to understand programming to a nuance that you are understanding every line of code and you are able to write things correctly in the first go itself. Right? Speed you will learn beyond that too. Don't worry about that. In the next hundred problem I think the next hundred should be focused a little more on implementation if you have got time because that will build you the speed and an acumen of basic language syntaxes because in first hundred also you will not learn all syntactical things but if you code the next hundred problem I think you will learn the major syntaxes. So secondly when you are going to the next hundred problems first hundred was accuracy next hundred is focusing on speed that hey can I build a little bit of speed or not okay. That's what I think 
would be the correct strategy. Beyond that, what about, what about the next 100 Vivek? I've solved 200 problems. What, what should I do now? Right? I think at that stage in time, you will not ask me because then you will realize that, hey, I know what is messed up for me and what should I kind of go back and correct for yourself. So this is mostly for people who are just starting off or are less than 200 problems as of now. But then if you're already done with 200 problems, I think you don't need to, I don't need to tell you that, hey, this is what you need to focus on. You will know by giving contests, right? So let's now take the bigger questions, right? How to build speed, right? How to build speed. Many people ask me that, hey, wait, I want to code faster. How, to, how do you do that? Or how do people actually code those first A, A B problems in like two, five minutes? How is that even possible? I have done that certain times. How are people doing that? Number one, they are building a good amount of muscle memory. The programming syntaxes are a muscle memory to them. They don't even think about it after, the, after a certain point in time. Okay, that's why they are able to do it so fast. People think about typing speed, words per minute. It's good to have them, but it's not at all mandatory. My word per minute would be like around 50, right? Uh, which is average, below average, I would say, for a good programmer, right? Uh, but my, my teammate Shubham has like more than 100 already, right? So, but again, I don't think he will get too much of advantage if he's actually sitting for a test, right? Because you can improve your speed without improving your WPM too, okay? Now, let's think about what more can you do. Good, get good at language. I mean, essentially get the muscle memory built correctly. Formulation step, I have talked about this multiple times on the channel. Formulation step is something you should add that before typing in anything, just think about how will you structure the code for 30 seconds. That's it. Okay. Template codes is something that a lot of competitive programmers use to improve their speed. In fact, I think after a certain point in time, you should definitely use them. You should know how a template works and then use them in contests. That is perfectly fine. Okay. Note that in coding tests and interviews, you will not have these templates and you will have to type them yourself. So you should be aware about how they are working or you can type them from scratch without seeing them, right? That's important. And clarity of thinking is something I would say is a big thing that improves your speed. How quick, clearly do you think about a problem is something that decides speed. Okay, I will talk about these things in a separate video, but let's talk about how do you speed think or how do you think faster than usual, right? Let's talk about that, okay? I think this is something I've not talked about quite often on, on my channel, but let's talk about this now because I think it's something that is important to talk about. Speed, how do you think faster of a problem? How do you come up with a solution faster, right? So all of this realm that we are talking about, right? This competitive programming, DSA, all of this comes under a bigger umbrella called problem solving, right? So in problem solving, you have four different things that helps you solve any particular problem, okay? And that's what you should try and learn even in competitive programming or DSA to improve. I think people don't really understand this framework. Let me explain you what exactly goes in uh, building somebody really good, okay? There are four very, very crucial things to learn about any topic when you are learning them. Or what do people learn when they solve problems? They learn four things. One is concepts, okay? One is framework. One is forms. Next would be tactics okay concepts frameworks forms and tactics okay in fact all of the learning that you do in any particular problem can be decomposed in either of the four okay or it's going to be mix of all four i would say let me give an example because i've taken the dp workshop so some of you have already watched that if not you can get that in the i button up there but uh, what exactly does all these four mean right concept Let's say, how does DP work internally, right? You can think about why does DP work? Why does caching works? Why is the complexity the way it is? And things like this. This is basically the concept layer of things, okay? Then framework. Framework is basically how do you think about a new problem, right? So you think about, okay, when you get a problem, when you're trying to solve it, you think about which form this problem is in, right? Which states do these, this problem uses? Which transitions to use? What will the time complexity? And then how do you formulate the code and all, right? So how to think comes in framework, right? How do you think about something that comes in framework? So these forms, states, transition, time complexity, how do you code? That also comes in a framework that many topics have frameworks that you can use repeatedly to solve every problem. 
like in DP, if you have seen the workshop, we have a very standard template. Pruning, base case, cash check, transition, and then save and return. Right? If you just write the codes in that form every time in that framework, it will work every time. There is no exception to that, right? Or I would say framework would be something that works for at least 90, 95% of the problems. So that's something that can be called a framework because it helps you solve those things in a mechanical manner, right? Then what is forms? So forms are basically repeated patterns that you see in every problem that you solve, right? There are certain forms that are pretty repetitive and you can classify questions in these forms. Every topic has forms, like graph has around 18, 19 forms of problems. DP has like eight major forms, right? Binary search has two major forms of problems. Then in that also there are sub forms that you can use for these things. Two pointers has a form, right? So everything has forms that have standard patterns that you can absorb out of problems and then repeatedly use. Every problem in, in the same form fits the same framework. That is what you can use in these kind of things, right? For an example, uh, like we talked about form one, form two, form three, LRDP, these kind of forms, right? These are very, very standard things that you can use in DP to think about a problem. Then comes tactics that, hey, how can I do this specific thing? Like, let's suppose there are uh, values for DP as negative as well. So how do you then set the cache array without using the negative value, negative one value? Generally, we do memset minus one to save unsaved values. But what if possibility wise, minus one is also possible. So what do you save in DP? Or uh, we can think about something else too. How to add space, sp state space reduction in code in a very sly way so that you don't have to change anything in the code, right? These kind of things we have talked about in the DP workshop. These are tactics that you can pick up from problems and then use it. All of problem solving can be broken down into learning these concepts, frameworks, tactics, or and the uh, forms. If you can pick them up from any place altogether, people do problem solving. When, when people say so, they are solving problems, they are essentially gathering these things, right? That's what people do, okay? How quickly can you gather the most amount of them before you see the actual question in the test is what is all it, it, it is about. Of course, there is some amount of connecting the dots and things, but majorly you collect these things quite a lot, okay? In fact, uh, personally being an educator, I have like, worked more like on just exact these things for over years. Like when I teach, these are the things that I kind of try to extract out of for any topic, right? So I'll talk about these more in future. Like I will try to decompose all of these things even more and how you can kind of learn better because I see many students trying to go through lead code, memorizing solution, not extracting these things and then ending up not being able to solve new problems. And it's gonna happen every time, even if you do it without understanding this. It's gonna happen that way. But anyways, let's let's go to the next thing. So we talked about speed, right? We talked about how to increase speed for thinking. We can we talked about how to increase the speed for typing or coding, right? All these things. In fact, I made a video on how you can avoid bugs and also that that is also something that can increase your speed. But again, it comes into more of accuracy, right? So how to build accuracy? Maybe uh, in, know your mistakes. That's number one. Know which kind of mistakes you do, right? Watch my last video. I think in one of my last videos, I kind of made a video of how to avoid mistakes. That's a very interesting video because you will get five techniques that you can use multiple times to avoid making coding mistakes, which can actually be fatal in a stress, stress scenario, okay? Uh, how do you find edge cases faster? This is something I will make in the next video. Basically, how do you quote unquote do debugging, right? So how do you do verdict-based debugging? How do you do flow-based debugging? And how do you do stress-test-based debugging? I will talk about these things in the next videos. And uh, there's more to talk about accuracy in, in large, but I think we have already gone beyond like 14, 13 minutes. I want to make them 15 minutes video. So I'll stop over here. Uh, if you choose, if you have to choose one, choose accuracy, right? Uh, I would definitely say that. Like speed comes with experience. Speed is a function of number of problems that you have solved, number of problems you have coded. Accuracy is more of, is a function I would say is of discipline that you have had while solving problems, like what you're extracting, how you are connecting the dots, how much of like learning is actually happening. We'll talk about these things in details in later, later videos, but that will be all for this particular one. I hope you understood that what to focus on. Accuracy is the place to go as of now, right? Unless you have tests tomorrow, then go quickly solve the problems, right? That will be all from my side in this video. I hope you enjoyed talking about these things, understanding how to do these things. I'll talk in details too in very soon. 
like like the video and subscribe to the channel if you are like interested in such talks and will make more such videos hope to see you in the next one as well see you there bye bye